Greetings! Welcome to the Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades instruction video. This is for the current build, which is Early Access Weekly Update number 6. You'll probably see new versions of this instruction video down the line as we add more content. Um, but the purpose of this is for those of you who are just getting started, whether you've done VR games in the past yet or not, we're going to basically just go over how everything works um, and jump around between a couple different scenes. So to begin with, just the very basics, if you've got your two controllers in front of you, is that uh, there are basically two different types of objects that you can pick up. There are firearms, which are bound to your hand by default, and there's every other sort of interaction, which requires you to keep the trigger depressed during the interaction. So as an example here, say I want to pick up this TT33, I want to place the interaction sphere of the controller into the handle of it, and then just click the trigger once. The handgun will now be bound to my hand, and if I wish to drop it, I need to hit the grip button, which are these buttons here on the side of the controller, and that will drop it. The other interactions, like say picking up a magazine, require me to keep the trigger depressed, and if I release the trigger, it will drop it. This makes it easier to uh, to essentially keep objects that you want in your hand long term in your hand easier and uh, while making it easier to pick up and drop everything else. So let's start off with a fairly simple interaction. We're going to do a, uh, a throwing item like a grenade here. So I'm going to pick up this grenade. Note I want to be careful not to grab the pin here as that will set the grenade live. Put that right in the center. Note I'm still holding down the trigger. If I release the trigger, the grenade will fall. And now I'm going to throw this grenade. And so to do this, I need to bring my other hand up here to where the pin is, hold the trigger down, and pull the pin away. We can just throw that. And then I can throw this in one of two ways. I can just throw it, and the fuse will start ticking down there, which I'll do that now. Whoop. Oh, that was a terrible throw. Boom! Or... I can cook the grenade ahead of time. So I can pull the pin out and then click the touchpad anywhere on the touchpad in the hand that is holding the grenade and throw it. Wonderful. So for something a little more complex, let's take a look at our dynamite here. We've got a couple different implements for lighting it. We have our, uh, our Flipso lighter here, which to use this, you need to flick it open by simply moving the hand in that direction. You can actually can flick it shut, although that's a little harder. And to light it, we want to just drag our thumb down the center of the touchpad. You don't need to click it, just drag it. Wonderful. And so that's lit now. So we're going to lit, light, <laughs> our stick of dynamite here. All right, that's looking good. I'm going to switch this to the other hand by just grabbing it with the other hand, and then ugh, give that awesome, wonderful. Now, if you do, if you if, if you're not a if you're a wood match person, not a lighter person, we've got some strike anywhere matches here for you, which these work by just grabbing them and just dragging the head along a surface. If you run out of these three, you can grab more by picking up our box of Patriot Strike Anywhere Matches, click the touchpad to open it up, and then just grab one out with your other hand. Oops, gotta light it first. Wonderful. There's, you'll notice there is, there's another type of grenade over here. This was the first one that we made. It's more of a sci-fi grenade in that you can choose the timing of the grenade. I actually pulled the pin out first. So if you'd like to change the detonation time on that grenade, just click the touchpad before you've pulled the pin out, and it will toggle between the different timings in terms of seconds. Wonderful. Now on to some of the firearms. So we've got two different types of breech loading guns here, the, uh, the cutoff shotgun and the M79 grenade launcher. The way these work 
is that you want to click either on the left quadrant or the right quadrant of the touchpad to open the breech while it's held. And then simply pick up the appropriate type of ammunition and insert it into the breech. From there, to close it, we can either flip it shut, like so, just using the sort of physics inertia of the fore, or we can grab the foregrip and pull it up. To empty it, we can either pull the shells out, like so, or we can tip the weapon back and have them fall out. The M79 works almost identically, and that once again I'm going to click the left side of the touchpad to pop it open. I'm going to pick a, uh, a grenade up, insert it in, grab the foregrip, and pull it up, and then fire. Pop. So you might be asking yourself, I've only got five grenades here, I'm going to fire those, and then what am I going to do? Well, the H3VR has a set of quick belt slots that are on your body. They're invisible by default, but if I'm holding an object and move them over those slots, the slots will momentarily appear. You'll notice there are three small ones on the right, three small ones on the left, and then two larger ones on the hips. There's also one to each side of your head, so in the case of a grenade launcher here, I can actually put it up next to my head. And now the way you use these is you simply drop the object using the grip buttons or releasing the trigger for objects like ammo, and it will pop into that slot, which will now move with you. In the case of ammo, we can actually place it into a slot, and then after we've placed it, hover our hand over and click the touchpad. This will turn the slot blue and permanently visible, and from there we can actually duplicate the object. You can't do this with guns, just with ammo, for performance reasons. So if you want to do a whole bunch of shooting, the best thing to do oftentimes is to start by spawn locking a piece of ammo to a quick belt slot. Next up is the touchpad menu. These are available to basically on either hand when the hand is empty, so when it's not holding an object or engaged in an interaction. If you just click the touchpad, this menu will pop up, and by simply holding your thumb down, not clicking, over the relevant quadrant of the touchpad, we have several commands available to us. The first is teleportation, which we can see here. We can choose, this is especially useful for those of you with a small Vive tracked range, especially say in this scene, where if you need to recenter where you're standing, you can simply hover your thumb over the teleport and then pull the trigger. Similarly, if an object is sort of out of reach of you and you don't want to change where your center point is, you can also use the retrieve object command by pointing towards something and then just holding down the trigger. And that will pull it to your hand, regardless of its distance. And lastly, we have the, the handy reset scene command, which is useful if you have blown everything off the table or just have too, have too many empty mags on the ground. And then lastly, we have the main menu, which we can pull the trigger, and we're going to use that right now to go on over to the, uh, to the indoor range. So now that we're over in the indoor range, we're going to go over how to operate the uh, various firearms that are already in H3. So we're going to first send our paper target out to a good distance to shoot from, and we're going to cover handguns first. So there's a little bit of control variation when it comes to the handguns, insofar that some of them have safeties and some of them don't. Beyond that, though, operating them all is, is roughly the same. So we're going to pick up the G22 here. As I mentioned before, we want to spawn lock our ammo to our quick belt first, so that we can have as many mags as we need. So I'm going to insert the magazine in, the weapon there. It will automatically free itself from your hand once it's in, and then I'm going to grab the slide of the handgun, pull it back, and then let it snap forward. A round is now chambered. This will now fire when I pull the trigger, and then when I'm done, let's, uh, let's go ahead and empty this. 
So you'll see that the slide locks back when you're empty. To eject the magazine, we want to click on the bottom quadrant of the touchpad, like so, and then insert another magazine. Now we need to chamber around, so the slide needs to come forward. You can either grab the slide and pull it back to let it sort of snap forward, like so, or if you want to pull the slide back here, you can also click the left quadrant of the touchpad to let the slide snap forward. Now, if you want to lock the slide back, grab it, pull it back, and hold up on the touchpad, and that will lock the slide back. Right forward. Wonderful. And our last quadrant is the safety. So in the case of the, uh, the M1911 and the, uh, the M9 over here, there is a functional safety. This is toggled via the right quadrant of the touchpad. Let's see with the safety on. The gun will not fire. Actually, we should go ahead and load it, just to be sure. So, turn the safety on. Gun will not fire. And that's all you need to know about operating the handguns. The revolver is a little different, as you might imagine, as it doesn't take magazines. For the revolver, we want to spawn lock individual rounds, which we will then load into the cylinder. To open the cylinder, simply click left on the touchpad and let it fall out. We then insert our rounds. And then snap it shut. This is a double action, so you, you can cock the hammer first by clicking down on the touchpad to make it a shorter trigger pull. Or you can simply pull the trigger each time. There you go. And then to eject, simply rock out the cylinder with the left side of the touchpad, move your alt hand up to this plunger, and just click the trigger. And that will dump your empty rounds. The Mac 11, being an open bolt submachine gun, has a few differences. For this weapon, we don't necessarily chamber around ahead of time. We simply grab the, uh, the charging handle here, pull it back, turn it off of safe, which for the Mac 11 is up on the touchpad, and that places it from safe to fire, and we simply pull the trigger. Down on the touchpad to eject. Gonna, you can spawn lock an empty magazine if you forgot to do it ahead of time, and you can just pull it out and get a new full one. And with the Mac 11, we can just load another mag. We don't need to do anything special. It's just ready to fire again. There you have it. Then we have the, uh, the M4 here, which actually has uh, a couple components that we can put onto it. The first of which is its sighting element. We can either place the handle sight onto it, which is done just like so, sort of almost magnet attaches. And we can even adjust the back sight to, to our desires. So you'll, as, as you hover over, you'll see one of these two white arrows. This one will change the aperture from a large to a small aperture. And the left facing arrow, if we pull the trigger, will toggle us between five elevations for the back sight. A little futzy, but some of you may find it useful. We can also put on a magnified optic. Like so. So I'm going to keep the handle side on there. I'm also going to reset my, my target paper here so it's clean. And then we're going to grab a magazine. So to begin with, we load the magazine into the M4. We grab the charging handle, pull it all the way back, and then release the trigger, letting it snap forward. Then we have a firing selector, which is accessed via the left quadrant of the touchpad. That's safe, that's semi, and that's full. So safe, won't fire, semi, 
and full. Excellent. Now, let's say that we've run dry on our first magazine. I'm just going to go ahead and empty it here. All right, so we're empty. The bolt is locked back. We now eject a magazine with the right quadrant of the touchpad as the button for the mag release is on the right. Load in a new magazine, and then we need to release the bolt. And we do this by simply tapping this button on the side, the bolt release, which allows it forward. Now you'll see here that I grabbed the foregrip now. This is a special interaction zone where once you click the trigger, your hand is sort of attached to it now as an alternate grip. This is used if you want to take a, a two-hand stance for firing, and you can even release the main grip here and continue to hold the rifle with your alternate hand. This is especially useful if you're the sort that reloads with your right hand. And that's all you need to know for now on operating the M4. Now, in terms of modern shotguns, we've got two. We've got a, a ultra short pump and we've got a, a, a semi-auto M1014. We're gonna do the pump first. So I've got a, I've gone ahead and put a shotgun shell in my quick belt. I'm gonna spawn lock it. And now to operate this, we want to grab the foregrip. So just click once with the, with the trigger to bind it to your hand, then hold the trigger to pull the foregrip down. We then insert a shell into the chamber, grab the handle again, pull the foregrip forward, and then insert five more into the carrier on the underside. To fire, we click, trigger on our main hand, and then grab the foregrip, once again holding down the trigger, racking it back, racking it forward, Wonderful. Now you'll notice if you if you if you rack the shotgun once like this, you won't be able to do it a second time. This is because the hammer's been cocked, which locks the foregrip. If you find yourself in this situation, you need to click the trigger to decock the shotgun to allow you to rack it again. And that's how you use the pump. Here's the M1014, our semi-automatic shotgun. This one, while still having a foregrip to hold and aim, uh, doesn't rack forward and back. Instead, it functions a little more like a rifle would, in that we have a bolt, which we pull back, we insert one into the chamber, then to release the bolt forward, we grab the handle and click left on the touchpad, which releases the bolt, and lo then load up to seven into the tube here. And from there, we're just ready to fire. And now we're empty. And that's how to fire the M1014. And now to conclude this tutorial, I just thought I would mention the modular range scene, which is the area of H3VR right now, where we have the most uh, timed challenges, including a scoreboard for each one of the available sequences that will show you top overall scores, top players, and your top local score. To access these different modes, you simply have to tap the numbers here and hit begin sequence. Obviously, you want to prepare what firearm you wish to use for them. The description of each range will tell you its difficulty, uh, the capacity of weapon that it's really designed for, and the number of waves and range. So please do give them a shot, and uh, we're, we're going to be constantly adding them as time goes on. As always, if you have any other, if you have any questions on how things work, if you run across a bug, feel free to hit us up on the Steam community for H3VR or in the comments of this video. Thanks for your time. Take care.